As a first responder, I come in contact with many seniors and people with underlying medical conditions. As an asthmatic myself and the mother of an asthmatic daughter, I found that it was necessary to take the COVID vaccine. I believe that everyone should take the vaccine, especially our seniors, because the sooner everyone is vaccinated, the sooner we can return to some form of normalcy. I'm a barista in a small grocery store. I serve coffee and pastries all day. I made the decision to get the vaccine, not only to protect myself and my family, but especially my customers. Some are young, some are old, some may be immune compromised. Take your best shot against COVID-19. Get the vaccine. Good day and welcome to the Government House Weekly Press Briefing and COVID-19 Update for the week of March 15, 2021. For the benefit of the radio listening audience, I am Richard Mota, Government House Communications, Government House Communications Director. We have a lot of COVID and non-COVID related news for you today. So joining me this afternoon is Dr. Ellis on behalf of Health Commissioner Hustain Kanasiong to provide the latest COVID-19 and vaccination numbers and information on where persons can receive free COVID testing in the territory this week. Also with us this afternoon is to provide a brief update on the status of the Emergency Rental Assistance Program is Executive Director of the Virgin Islands Housing Finance Authority, Mr. Darrell Griffith. But before we go to Dr. Ellis, I want to remind the viewing and listening public that the Virgin Islands Police Department is still actively searching for 80-year-old St. Croix resident Michael Emanuel. The search for Mr. Emanuel is now in its fourth week. The Virgin Islands Police Department, Mr. Emanuel's family and friends, and volunteers from several community organizations continue the exhaustive search on the island of St. Croix. The VIPD is continuing to follow up on tips from the community. Mr. Emanuel also called Dodor, and uh, forgive me if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, is a black male standing approximately five feet five inches tall and weighs around 150 pounds. Mr. Emmanuel is an individual experiencing Alzheimer's disease and was last seen at his residence at the Cambridge Apartments in Frederickstead at around 6.45 a.m. on Friday, February 19th. There is currently a $3,200 reward for any information on the whereabouts of Mr. Emmanuel. Search efforts are also underway for 41-year-old Sarm Heslop, 41 years old, who was last seen on Sunday, March 7th, aboard the vessel Siren Song, or Siren Song, moored in Frank Bay, St. John. Ms. Heslop is a Caucasian female standing five feet seven inches tall. We pray for Mr. Emmanuel and Ms. Heslop's safe return and ask that anyone in the community with information on their whereabouts, please provide that information to the Virgin Islands Police Department. At this time, we will turn over the briefing to Dr. Ellis to provide the numbers on COVID-19 and uh, vaccinations in the territory. Dr. Ellis. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. As of March 11th, 2021, the Department of Health has tested a total of 50,108 persons under investigation, or PUIs, of which 2,767 have tested positive and 47,329 have tested negative. There are currently 89 active cases in the territory, 2,653 cases have recovered with 25 fatalities related to COVID-19. From our hospitals, Juan F. Louis Hospital and Medical Center reports four COVID-19 cases with one vented, and Schneider Regional Medical Center reports zero COVID-19 patients. Our surveillance efforts continue with our epidemiology hotline. Our hotline remains open seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. for callers to report suspected cases of COVID-19. 
For St. Croix, the number is 340-712-6299. St. Thomas, St. John, 340-776-1519. We are still seeing new cases of COVID-19 across the territory, and everyone needs to practice the same preventive measures that have helped us keep our numbers low in the past. Most importantly, get vaccinated. We are hosting pop-up testing events this week. You can pre-register for pop-up testing online at covid19usvi.com forward slash testing. Here are our upcoming top um, pop-up testing events on St. Thomas Home Depot, Tuesday, March 16th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. St. Thomas Home Depot, Thursday, March 18th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. St. Croix at Canagata Rec Center, Tuesday, March 16th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. and St. Croix at Bodo Park, Thursday, March 18th from 10.30 to 1.30 p.m. St. John at the Vipa Gravel Yard, Wednesday, March 17th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. We have completed two weeks of vaccinations at the Community Vaccination Centers, or CVCs, on St. Croix and St. Thomas, and those efforts are going very well, thanks to our local and federal partners and, of course, the community. We are expanding our efforts, and the CVCs will now have extended hours for access after usual working hours. We will extend the centers to be open to 7 p.m. for vaccinations. We are also working to build more options for the residents of St. John in the very near future. So far, 20,081 first doses have been administered and 9,095 second doses for a total of 29,176 doses administered. We are now receiving the Pfizer, Moderna, and Janssen vaccines in the territory. The Johnson & Johnson's Janssen vaccine will be held initially for mobile vaccination targeting homebound and homeless populations and eventually hospital discharges, inpatient and emergency department. Everyone aged 16 and over are eligible for the COVID-19 vaccines. There are no barriers for getting vaccinated. There are accommodations being made for seniors and individuals with disabilities and being undocumented should not stop you from seeking the vaccine. If you are interested in scheduling an appointment to get vaccinated, please call 340-777-8227 or visit us online where you can schedule your own appointment at covid19usvi.com forward slash vaccines. The process is smooth and the staff at the centers are very accommodating. We thank you all for participating. There are some activities that fully vaccinated people can begin to resume now in their own homes. Everyone, even those who are vaccinated, should continue with all the mitigation strategies when in public settings. As the science evolves and more people get vaccinated, we will continue to provide more guidance to help fully vaccinated people safely resume more activities. A person is considered fully vaccinated two weeks after receiving the last required dose of the vaccine and can visit with other fully vaccinated people indoors without wearing masks or staying six feet apart. Visit with unvaccinated people from one other household indoors without wearing masks or staying six feet apart if everyone in the other household is at low risk for severe disease. Refrain from quarantine and testing if they do not have symptoms of COVID-19 after contact with someone who has COVID-19. Aside from the benefits of gathering with others, another plus to being fully vaccinated is traveling can be easier. If you must travel, you can take an antibody test and use the positive antibody test results to upload to the travel portal as long as it is dated within four months from your travel date. Visit usviupdate.com for complete travel requirements. To keep up with the latest information, please visit the U.S. Virgin Islands Department of Health Facebook page or our website, www.covid19usvi.com. And for COVID-19 health information alerts, text COVID-19 USVI to 888777. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ellis. We will now go to Executive Director Dale Griffith for uh, an update on the Emergency Rental Assistance Program. Director. Hi, good day, everyone. The Virgin Islands Housing Finance Authority Go Live plan date for the Emergency Rental Assistance Program is March 29th, but the authority is going to do a blitz of advertising starting this Wednesday um, on the 17th. So you'll see in your local newspapers, on Facebook, 
and are all over the internet, including www.vihfa.gov, and also on um, all of your local radio stations too as well. We're gonna provide you with the information that you're gonna need to be able to apply for the program. For our early um, preview, since we're at Government House, of the things you will need to, to be able to apply for this program, one of the first things you're gonna need is your landlord's name, mailing address, and telephone number. You're gonna need a statement of rent owed or eviction notice from your landlord. You're gonna need a birth certificate or your real ID driver's license and social security cards for all household members. A signed copy of your lease rental agreement, valid ID or current utility bill verifying USVI residency, past due notices showing utilities owed if you plan to use this to also pay your utilities, a copy of your 2019 tax returns if applicable, proof of household income status as applicable, unemployment insurance statement, job letter, layoff or furlough letter, all of those if applicable. You don't have to bring all of those things. And at least two months worth of pay stubs and social security benefit letter also if applicable. Now this program can pay up to 12 months of rental assistance and utilities owed. So you can go as far back as March of this year in which was the onset of, of, the, of COVID. So it'll be able to, uh, actually it's March of last year, we're actually in 2021 now, so it's March of 2020, um, please forgive me. So you can go as far back as March of 2020 and we'll be able to pay your past due utilities or rent for the last 12 months. And this program also allows you to, if, if you have trouble in the future for you to, to let the program know and it can pay up to three months in advance of your rent um, if, if you have trouble going forward. So we can pay past due and we can pay upcoming rent. So this Wednesday, please look out on all media outlets. The VIHFA will do an intense marketing blitz to let you know what you need to do to be able to apply for the Emergency Rental Assistance Program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director Griffith. Uh, we certainly encourage Virgin Islanders who may be, able, be eligible for that program to take a, please take advantage of that. Speaking of assistance to families impacted by COVID-19, this past Friday, President Biden signed landmark legislation to provide much needed help to those impacted by some of the pandemic's worst economic effects. As a result of the relentless efforts of Governor Bryan and his team in Washington, D.C., to lobby members of Congress as well as White House officials from the Biden administration, Virgin Islands families are among the Americans who will receive the much needed support under the American Rescue Act of 2021. In addition to supporting Virgin Islands families, the American Rescue Act will help further the government of the Virgin Islands' efforts to fight this pandemic by providing additional resources to continue our community vaccination programs and assist us with additional resources to continue building out safe and healthy infrastructure at our schools so that our students can safely return to the classroom. So what is in the American Rescue Plan? Well, it includes direct payments for individuals earning up to $75,000 and couples earning up to $150,000. $1,000, and these payments are up to are, are $1,400 per person and for each claimed dependent. Again, that's persons earning up to $75,000 and couples earning up to $150,000 under this American Rescue Plan is eligible for $1,400 stimulus payments per person and for each claimed dependent. As before, the U.S. Department of Treasury will be providing a lump sum transfer to the territories, and we will begin mailing those checks as soon as, or ma mailing checks as soon as that funding is received. Also included is a supplemental federal employment benefits of $300 a week. Those will be extended through September 6. This is in addition to the local unemployment benefits that are currently being administered. The child tax credit is temporarily expanded to increase the amount to $3,000 for children ages 6 to 17 and $3,600 for children under the age of 6. Additional funding has been authorized for the Paycheck Protection Program to issue small business loans with a special push to include nonprofits. 
as well. The Department of Education and the University of the Virgin Islands will also receive additional federal grant funding under the American Rescue Act. There is also additional funding to help support child care facilities. Support for low-income families includes more funding for the Energy Assistance Program, known locally as ECAP, and the Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children, uh, also known as WIC. Public health funding to administer and distribute COVID-19 vaccines and provide contact tracing and buying testing supplies and personal protective equipment will also be included uh, as a provision under the American Rescue Act. There is targeted support for bars and restaurants. There is also additional funding for the Emergency Rental Assistance Program, which the Housing Finance Authority expects to launch at the end of this month, uh, as Director Griffith just mentioned. Of particular benefit to the Virgin Islands, though, are the changes to the Earned Income Tax Credit. The Earned Income Tax Credit is generally considered the single most effective federal anti-poverty program for working households. It encourages work by providing additional income for low-wage workers. The American Rescue Plan expands the Earned Income Tax Credit for 2021. It also raises the minimum credit for adults without children from $530 to nearly $1,500 and raises the income limit for the credit from $16,000 to about $21,000. But most importantly, it provides federal funding to the territory to cover the expense of that tax credit moving forward. To highlight what this means to the territory, the Earned Income Tax Credit creates a $20 million shortfall in tax revenue each year for the territory and is a major contributor to the USVI's backlog in paying timely tax refunds. This because our mirror of the US tax code requires the USVI to pay out more than 20 million in tax credits annually for tax revenue it does not collect. This provision in the American Rescue Plan not only gives the working poor in our territory a financial boost, but it also provides critical support to our government in meeting this, this mandate of our mirror tax code. In some other news, last week, the Department of Finance and the Bureau of Internal Revenue were able to mail 9,738 stimulus checks, totaling just over $7 million to Virgin Islands residents. This included 6,736 checks that were sent to Social Security recipients. We expect to mail an additional 7,000 checks, totaling $5 million this week. As a reminder to the public, if you have not filed your income tax return for 2019, you have until close of business today, Monday, March 15th, to do so to be eligible for the second stimulus and now this third stimulus payment. If you are not a tax filer, you can file a 2019 Form 1040 and annotate $1 on the interest line. Social Security recipients, if you have received your first payment or your second stimulus payment, uh, this round will be the this will be mailed to you automatically. The third stimulus payment will be mailed to you automatically as the Bureau already has your information. The Bureau has established a hotline to assist in responding to the volume of calls due to the stimulus payments and refund check inquiries. That hotline number is 340-714-9325. Again, that hotline number is 340-714-9325. Three, two, five. In non-COVID related news this afternoon, Governor Bryan is pleased with the decision of the District Court of the Virgin Islands to allow the government to resume collection of excise taxes. This has been a long and costly legal battle and one the Bryan Roach administration has fought vigorously since taking office in 2019. Governor Bryan has stated that the conservative budgetary approach to government is paying off government debt. We have been able to balance the current budget without depending on collection of excise taxes. Now that this traditional source of revenue is once again available, we can utilize it to address outstanding obligations owed by this government. Before we place these funds into the general fund for general government operations, we will make sure that our people remain our priority, and so we will be keeping to our promise of utilizing the first set of collections from the excise taxes to reverse the 8% pay cut 
owed to public sector workers as a result of the Economic Stability Act of 2019. Following up on the efforts to combat gun violence mentioned in his State of the Territory Address, Governor Bryan has submitted to the legislature several measures to support the Virgin Islands Police Department's initiatives to combat gun crime and apprehend violent criminal offenders. Governor Bryan recently submitted legislation to the Senate to clarify reciprocity requirements for, legal carry of fire, for the legal carry of firearms and for transporting firearms, ammunition, and accessories into the territory by residents and visitors alike. The proposed legislation seeks to require 24-hour notice of intent to import firearms into the territory to facilitate VIPD search and declaration. This legislation further complements efforts to intercept illegally smuggled firearms undertaken by the Virgin Islands Police Department and agreements currently being coordinated with the Virgin Islands Port Authority and the territory's airline partners. These legislative, these legislative measures will add to the, administrative, the administration and the Virgin Islands Police Department's ongoing efforts, including the, re the redeployment of shot spotter technology, the installation of surveillance cameras, which is nearing completion, and VIPD's Virgin Islands Crime Initiative, which has removed more than 180 illegal firearms from our community. Governor Bryan also signed into effect two executive orders, Executive Order 510-2021, which activates all executive branch peace officers territory-wide to perform, to perform public safety functions as necessary under the direction of VIPD's commissioner for a period of at least 16 regular non-overtime hours per calendar month. It also mobilizes the Virgin Islands National Guard, adding to VIPD forces as necessary. The order will bolster VIPD's manpower, allowing for increased and effective high visibility policing. Executive Order 511 2021 or 2021 establishes the Governor's Advisory Council on Community Violence Intervention, comprised of government, private sector, nonprofit, religious, and community advocates to coordinate strategic interventions. And, con and contributing resources to complement the newly established Office of Gun Violence Prevention, for which staff recruitment efforts are currently underway. In closing this afternoon, I want to remind the public again that we are in phase three, or the public phase of our vaccination strategy, meaning all Virgin Islanders 16 and older are now eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine at any one of our community vaccination centers in St. Croix and St. Thomas. You can schedule your vaccine appointment online by going to the Department of Health's website at COVID-19 USVI forward slash vaccines and by clicking the Book Now tab by visiting Vitima's website at vitima.vi.gov or by contacting Vitima's vaccination hotline at 340-777 VAX or 340-777-8227 if you do not have ready access to the internet. That appointment hotline is staffed Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. by both English and Spanish speaking personnel. If for some reason there is a high volume of calls and you are unable to reach a live representative, please leave a message with your name and, and your callback number and someone will return your call and assist you as soon as possible. I will take any questions from the media if there are any. I am being signaled that we do have one question. Caller, go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, this is Suzanne Carlson from the Daily News. Good afternoon, Suzanne. Hey, why was the public notice that immediately after DPNR was notified that Lime Tree Bay had discharged oil across homes in the Clifton Hill neighborhood on St. Croix? And will such a notice be issued if there's another flare of oil so people can know that they might be drinking water from cisterns that have been contaminated with oil? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first part of your question, Suzanne. You were talking about notice of discharge for Lime Tree? Yes. Why was, why was a public notice not issued immediately after DPNR was notified that Lime Tree Bay had discharged oil across homes on St. Croix? 
I do not have specific details on that matter, um, but I can look into that and, and get uh, a more detailed answer for you. You're asking why wasn't the public um, notified immediately by DPNR, you're saying? Or anyone. Okay, I'm not, I'm not sure about that, but I, I can look into that and get, get a, uh, an answer to you on that. I would... Uh, is, there I, any concern, is, is there any concern about the perception of nepotism and the Attorney General's daughter getting a $70,000 contract to promote the territory, plus 15000 in travel expenses? I'm not familiar with the details of that matter. Uh, what, what you're, you're alleging that the Attorney General's daughter... Can you repeat? Received a, Received a, a, a contract through the legal, the legal government contracting process? Su Suzanne, go ahead. Hello? Yeah, I, I'm, can you, you, I'm sorry, I was, I was trying to follow your question there. You're saying the Attorney General's daughter is a government contractor? That's been reported, yeah. Sure, uh, and so I know that there is a, I mean, I don't, like I said, I don't have details on her contract or what services she is providing to the government, but we do have a procurement process by which every government contractor, anyone who is awarded a government contract has to follow, um, you know, just because she's the Attorney General's daughter. I mean, I, I don't, like I said, I don't have details on that, but that doesn't mean that that process was not followed. I, like I said, I just, you know, just because that the, that someone is related to uh, someone does not mean that they are unqualified for a position or they're being awarded some contract for a service that they can provide to the government um, I, I, I mean, we live in a small community, so I, I just, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just trying to follow your question. It, are, you, are, you, are you saying that there's some sort of impropriety there because she's related or the daughter of the Attorney General that she shouldn't have a government contract? I'm asking that concern. If, there is, if there's a concern for nepotism? Yeah, I mean, so at, at the end of the day, we live in a small community. Um, like I said, just because someone is related to someone doesn't mean that um, they cannot provide a service if they own a business to the government. I don't think that that renders anyone um, incapable of doing that. Um, I would even venture to say that uh, if we, if we you know, always continue to play this game of six degrees of separation, it'll almost guarantee that uh, none of our talented and very, um, very capable Virgin Islanders can either hold a government position or do business with the Virgin Islands government. So, I mean, like I said, I don't know the details of her business or what her contract states, but just because you're related to someone who serves in a government position, I don't think that that should preclude you from, uh, if you're a business owner, if you're, or if you're a service provider, being able to provide services to the government. Okay, I'm still waiting the, our request for COVID-19 citations, is that forthcoming? Uh, I don't have any details on that COVID-19 citations. Are you talking about from the Department of Licensing and Consumer Affairs? I, I've been directed to every agency, DC, DLCA, police, government house, back and forth and back and forth. Is someone going to respond? Sure, sure. So I, let, me, let me just try to explain that for one second. So if you, if you know Suzanne, the, the, the COVID-19 task force is just that. It's a task force, so it's a multi-agency task force. So depending on what citation is issued, it might come from the Virgin Islands Police Department. It might come from Department of Licensing and Consumer Affairs. It might come from the Department of Planning and Natural Resources. So uh, for lack of a better term, there may be any hodgepodge of citations, and so it takes a lot of interagency coordination. So if you're asking for a general blanket of all of, to see all of the citations, that, that does require some um, level of interagency coordination. So that could be the reason for why um, you have been referred based on what you're specifically asking for to, from one agency to the next. I've been asking for months. 
someone could please figure out who's responsible for responding to these public re records requests, I'd appreciate it. All right, thank you, Suzanne. Do you have a, uh, another question? That's it, thanks. Suzanne, do we have any more questions from members of the media? Uh, hearing none. Well, that concludes our Q&A session is over. Sincerely apologize for that. That concludes our briefing this afternoon. Remember to please go out and get the vaccine. It is important for your health, uh, for the health of our, our com it is important for the health of our community, but more importantly, it is uh, important for your health and, and the health of your loved ones. This is truly our best shot at getting back to some semblance of normalcy, whatever that will look like. So we are encouraging you to take your best shot against COVID-19, get the vaccine. It has been two weeks since I received my first dose and I'm looking forward to uh, receiving my second and being fully inoculated against this virus. Uh, stay safe, God bless you. I will see you guys next week, Monday. Thank you. I am Alicia Barnes. As a mother, grandmother, community advocate and influencer, I got vaccinated because it is the responsible thing to do. I encourage you to be a responsible citizen and get the vaccine. Do it for yourself, your family, and your community. Take your best shot against COVID-19 and get the vaccine. As the ADA coordinator, knowing that I could be protected against COVID-19 was my number one reason for taking the vaccine, protecting myself, my family, and other persons to whom I provide services to, it's my priority. So I'm encouraging everyone, especially those with disabilities, to step up and take your best shot against COVID-19 and take the vaccine.